I'm Pat Gunn, and this is a Let's Play for The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. So, I think I might have mentioned in either one of my previous uh, Let's Plays, or in one of my... Um, or in one of my general blogging type uh, deals, that this is a game that I've been enjoying. It's, it's often compared to the, uh, the Legend of Zelda. Uh, largely, I think, because the, the game engine is kind of similar. It, it has a certain kind of similar, uh, similarity to it, but the thing about Zelda is that it's a relatively static experience, and that the dungeons you explore, you'll learn them, you'll know them, and eventually, like, you'll know them by heart. Anybody who's played Zelda 1, you know exactly where everything is. Whereas so much of, of, the, bind, uh, of the Binding of Isaac is... Uh, is randomized with every go, which does a great job of keeping the game fresh. Uh, let's see, what does Joker do? I can't quite remember what Joker does. I think it sends you to a treasure room. Um, but yeah, keeping the game fresh means that you'll keep on coming back to this every uh, every so often. And um, I think that that makes it just for a good occasional diversion. Like, it's, it's a good game if you just have a few... Uh, few minutes or maybe just a while a while to spare and the game has a staggering number of items so and they very few of them will show up in any given run so all of your games will feel pretty different and you have a, a nice set of uh, different set of characters that uh, you can pick from okay so yeah, each game will, will be pretty different so early on in the game, there are certain things that you need to really keep track of. Bombs, keys, and, um... Yeah, bombs and keys are the things that you really need to worry about. Other stuff? Uh, there are items, which I don't have any of yet. Uh, there are, there are some items that enhance you that are just passive. You can generally have a, a lot of those. And then there are items that uh, that are like singular, and you can typically have just one of those. Let's see. Ooh, ooh. And right now I have a passive item that seems to be, uh, be dropping tar behind me as I walk, which slows down enemies as they step into it, which is kind of handy. Okay, let's go. And I have a card on the right. That's a one-use item. So if I use this, this will pull me over somewhere. This is the Devil Room. You can spend your hearts. Your hearts are your health. Uh, and here you can give up uh, re relatively permanently one of your health points. You see those in the upper left-hand corner here uh, in exchange for an item. But I'm not going to do that because these are kind of important to conserve. Good. Yeah. So the, you wander through typically I think five or six different uh, different levels in a given game, and if you survive, I mean there's a boss at the end of each level, and. It's not the same set of bosses each time. That too is random. And you're not facing the same set of foes each time either, which is kind of nice. So, basically, it's a highly randomized cousin of Zelda, maybe. That's, that's probably the best way to think about it. But yeah, I guess maybe the bombs and the keys and the health and the dungeon exploration, the room type, the way that you're thinking about rooms, that's similar to Zelda. And that's probably a good basis for for declaring them to be similar kinds of games. But yeah, right now I'm doing okay with the basic supplies, and that my, uh, my health and keys I have enough where if I need to unlock something or bomb a wall, I can do so. Doing okay in combat so far. Uh, 
only have four coins at the moment. Coins are interesting. There are rooms where you can buy stuff, and you just keep on picking up coins randomly through the game. There are occasionally places where you might have to bomb someplace to reach an area where there are coins. And there you kind of face a choice, am I going to spend my bombs on this? Basically, th these amount to conversions. Is it is it smart for me to convert my my uh, bomb to a coin at this point? Is it smart for me to risk using my key to open open up a chest at this point? Because you don't know what's inside a chest until you open it. But later on in the game, hopefully... You're, you're mostly saying yes. Earlier on in the game, when your supplies are scarce, you might face some tough choices. But so far, this has been a game of, uh, of plenty. Or at least this, this particular uh, run-through. Uh, there's a card, and let's see. Lemon. Well, this is not the most useful of items. Basically, and you see that bar in the upper left? That means that if I use it, It'll take me two rooms full of killing monsters before it refills. So, this is what it looks like. Oop. And unfortunately, these are flying critters, so it's not actually effective against them. But that's basically, if those are not flying critters, then if they walk through it, they would be injured or probably killed by it. Okay, back to full health, because... Oh, and some things like this rock that, because of its coloration and the X on it, meant that if you bomb it, uh, usually some will pop out. Here's another one. You can see the X. So, cool. There is another key and another spirit heart. Now, the spirit hearts, they're kind of special in that... Okay, it's not one of those. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to guess where there's a secret here. And I walk out, then I'll use my card. Oh, well, fudge. Um, I'll tell you about secret rooms in a sec. Now, spirit hearts, ordinarily, you saw if I got injured and I lost a red heart, I still have an empty heart container that amounts to... The game knows what my maximum number of hearts should, uh, should be, and I can replenish those hearts with the relatively available red heart. Whereas the spirit hearts, they actually increase my total possible number of health, but but the only way to, to replenish those is to get the much rarer uh, spirit hearts. Okay. But also spirit hearts go uh, go first. Yeah, so the game mechanics are pretty interesting. I mean, if, if you've ever tried to design a game, it's not easy to, to do that kind of thing. And there's a boss down, and there's another good one. Oh, I guess I could have used the uh, the lemon there against that boss. I didn't choose to. Let's see what's over here. Okay, these kinds of rooms, if you decide to open the chest, then you get to fight some foes, otherwise you can slip back out there without opening anything. And nothing bad will happen. But I usually am gonna be adventurous and fight some foes and just gamble on, on uh, the adventureness. <laughs> and, uh, doesn't always, but usually does. Or, well, I mean, I won't say it usually does, but it's rather I, I just think if you're going to play a game, you might as well be adventurous in it. And maybe it does pay off. I, I, I just don't know for sure. Oh. Like lots of games, if you can manage to avoid being hit, then you are definitely... Oh yeah, so when you arrive on the floor, sometimes you end up with a curse. I arrived on this floor with the Curse of the Unknown, and that seems to have hit my hit point total, so I don't know how healthy I am on this floor, at least. Um, when I leave this floor, my health will be visible, although I'll be able to infer it by whether I'm able to pick up hearts. Okay, this is not going to be terribly fun. But earlier, so the point of this game, or at least, or not point, but one of the big bits of strategy in this game is that when you get near the end of the game, 
there are a few attributes that you really want to have. You want to have good firepower, and you want to have items that will get you the ability to survive bullet hell. Now, you don't strictly speaking need both of those, but you're going to be better off with them. And, but it's not like you really get to choose. You don't have a lot of choice as to what the game's going to toss at you. Although, the areas where you do have choice are typically in those, uh, in those devil rooms. Where you can decide, is it worth spending one of my permanent health containers on this item or not? And there are sometimes in the game, either an item room or elsewhere, you might get a chance to increase your total permanent health, which is great. Okay, here's another item. Now this guy leaves some uh, leaves a trail of uh, acid behind me. Well, it's actually nasty blood, but this means that anybody wandering behind me, provided that they're not flying, they're going to be both slowed down and damaged. Which is kind of a nice combo. It's not quite the same thing as firepower, but uh, item synergy is kind of fun in the game. And that is a trinket you'll see in the lower left. Um, Trinkets just kind of sit by you, and uh, they, you can only have one trinket at a time. But they uh, they change some mechanic of the game. I don't remember offhand what each trinket is. Let's see. Okay. And those battery things they will replenish a depletable item like my lemon thing, which I'm not really using. It's honestly not one of my favorite but oh, this one is giving me a lot of usefulness here. Oh, got hit. Uh, I imagine I'm not too injured, but I really don't remember what my health total is or how many soul hearts. Um, now, if you bomb a rock that's next to your pit, it will fall over and fill the pit which can let you reach some places that you otherwise couldn't reach, which is kind of handy. Okay, that, so I know that I'm at full health because I can't pick up a red heart. Um, yeah, so I think this means that I'm ready to pop up here and fight the boss. Because each level has a boss. You have to worry about these, this dude because he can jump really fast. Uh, we want to avoid being damaged if possible by by bosses. Now, typically, another thing that helps keep things interesting is the bosses and normal foes come in certain variants. So it's not like you, uh, when you when you face them, you're always facing quite the same boss. It's rather you're facing a slight. Slight, uh, slightly different boss each time. Even if it's even if it looks the same, they they fit a basic template, but they're a little bit different than you could ever see the last time. Or at least you have to figure out like which of several variants you're you're facing. That's a helps keep the game interesting. I think that's really the way the reason for this game is successful. It's it's not that it's the most intrinsically interesting game. But it's rather that the replay value comes out of the game. Uh, there is more, uh, more permanent health. And this is a version of the Devil Room where you are actually not asked to sacrifice permanent health. There are uh, bombs that you can't pick up. They just blow up, and if you're stuck next to one of them, you take some damage. Okay, that's all I'm going to do on this floor. Let's head on down to the next floor where my curse will be lifted, and I will see how healthy I am. Good, I'm doing okay. Down we go. A lot of the items that you pick up, they will change your appearance a little bit, which also is kind of fun. Okay, key. Now, pills can be positive or negative, unless you're lucky enough to get an item that makes them all positive, which looks like a doctor's mask. Um, I tend to gamble on them, because once you've identified a pill, you know whether it's positive uh, or negative, and you might choose, I'm not going to use this pill, if, it, if you know that it's negative. So particularly early in the game, you're, you're just basically scouting stuff out, and figuring out, like, is this something that I'm going to use 
So don't get too discouraged if you get a pillow and it does something bad to you. You just don't use that pillow again. But, uh, it, it can be a little bit frustrating. Particularly, not all of the characters have the same basic starting stats, and you do want to get your stats up near, near the end of the game, particularly, because some of the later bosses are kind of tough. And you're not going to have a lot of luck uh, late in game if you if you haven't toughened up significantly. <laughs> But you have plenty of time to get get your character up. And if it doesn't work out, well, it's not like you spent a huge amount of time building your character to start again. Another big advantage late in game is flight, and that there are ways to make your character fly. So that right now you can see I can't walk over either these rocks or these pits, but there are ways to let your character fly. And if your character can fly, then they can. They can move over anything, and a lot of your foes can, which gives you mobility advantage. So I could just hover right over the pit, uh, want any of these pits, and, and keep shooting at my enemies, uh, be, being very safe. Or, if my enemies can, uh, can fly and I can't, I'm at a disadvantage, but if I can fly, then that disadvantage clears up. Now you heard that clanking noise. Typically, you can't leave a room until all your uh, all the foes there are dead. Although you can typically bomb a door back open if you're willing to, to spend uh, spend a bomb on the door. You normally don't want to do that though because you often get little advantages from uh, clearing the room. Or well, sometimes you do it. A heart might drop or something like that. Plus, if you have to go back through the room and you haven't cleared it, it'll be completely uh, full of monsters again. So. Now, this is a one-time use item that will let me fly. It's kind of nice. It's useful to have a little bit more flexibility, but it would be nice to have a permanent item that means that I'm always flying. Now, you might have noticed that I picked up those glasses there. That basically means that I can see... Uh, I was looking for a hidden room before um, using bombs. Now I can just flat out see where all the hidden rooms are, which is kind of handy. Like right now, you saw that green thing open up right there. That is a hidden room. So, if I can clear out this room, then I can walk through that hidden door. And there will be typically either some goodies or a boss in here. Ah. Okay, health down. That's not good. Uh, two spirit hearts, two more spirit hearts. Luck down. Wow, I'm really not lucking out here. Well. Oh. Notice I dropped that pill because you can only hold one of these. So I say drop. Uh, drop one if you try to pick another one up. And I don't really need to have the worst luck. Okay. Some more of these chasey dudes. You can knock them down, but you have to shoot them a few more times once you're dead if you really want to kill them. Or otherwise damage them. So let's keep wandering around the level before we fight the boss, just to make sure that we've done everything we want to do. Oh, this is fun. There's a fly. I don't quite remember what, why I want that, but there's an item. And generally items are good. Let's pop down here. Okay. And more keys. Boss room. Or, I mean, it's a goodie room. But, or a challenge room, that's what they're called. Fighting clothes if you want to make it. It wasn't a lot of treasure, but. Yeah. So, uh, typically, the game rewards are better. Okay. Let's another boss, I think. Those eyeballs are, are invincible, and I don't like, really like being shot at, particularly when I don't have some way to de deflect the, uh, those uh, bullets. Because there are ways to get like rings of flies circling around here to uh, push bullets away. 
pretty handy, but I do not have any of that yet, so right now I just have to rely on my ability to dodge things. Kind of not fantastic, guys. Nobody is, but uh, it's just it's just more stuff to sort out. Okay. There's an even worse version of this boss, but it'll shoot laser that you from its eyes. Oh, get away from me, floaty eyeballs. Okay. Yeah. My health is not amazing at this point. These eyeballs are getting really good. Is there another boss that I get to face? No. So there's a spirit heart. Now, you will notice me doing a bit of strategy. I'm not picking up the spirit heart right now. Well, actually, no. I can pick it up. If you're at full health and you don't, uh, and you don't have a, uh, and you don't have a gray heart, you typically will want to save that until after you've fought the boss. You'll come back and get it. And the reason for that is that you're uh, you're gambling on. You're, you don't get, okay, so how that white heart works. Okay, so this is how this, this will go. I haven't yet worked out a good strategy for facing this boss. And I've demonstrated why... Well, anyhow. Yeah, so let me explain the strategy. The, the reason why you typically don't want to do it this way and uh, is that if you take uh, uh, damage, more damage, if you lose any red hearts while you have that white heart, then you lose the white heart. If you manage to make it through the level, uh, and, uh, and so at the start of your next level, you still have the white heart, you get a new, perm uh, new permanent red heart, which is nice. But I screwed it up by taking too much damage with that boss, because that's one of the few bosses which uh, I end up taking uh, a fair amount of damage always when I face. Unless I have uh, a, good, a good deal more firepower than I have right now. Because again, by a certain point in the game, you need to have more firepower than I have right now to be successful. So I'm hoping by the time I get much further into the game, I will have some additional juice, because if I do not, then things will be bad. Not that my firepower is awful, it's just it's not really up it's not for, uh, for women. Okay. Uh, that could be useful. That's uh, this guy. These guys are not too fun because they have the habit of dashing at you crazy fast. And it's not the most fun. Card here. Do a fair amount of damage to everything on the screen. Another card waiting for me. Or, no, maybe that was the last level. Was it? It was. I'll just keep moving. Basically, the, the game is, is giving me novelty weapons Look here, this dragon and the stuff behind me. It's, it's a novelty build, it's not really a firepower build or anything like that, so it means I'm not really ready for the end game and stuff. It's a fun way to play. A lot of things in the game are fun, but it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're really going to have any chance to be successful. successful. And I'm pretty sure that this is not going to be a successful character. Okay. <laughs> I mean, can't win them all. Let's pop up 
there and get apart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's another heart. I'm not gonna die immediately, but it's just sooner or later the I mean the other possibility is just that I would get enough uh, uh, I would get enough health where I, I would have more leeway to not have a lot of fire power, but I haven't really built up my health total either. I had that bad luck with the uh, with the pills too, and I haven't had much good luck with with getting more uh, more health either. So, I mean, that's, that's basically the the way that uh, this game goes. So much of, of your end game depends on whether it looks like you have much of a chance to be successful. But, I'm not the sort to really quit early because it's good practice. Okay, it's not really worth traversing that right now. It's good practice to see how far you can get. Okay, well, there's that and that. So these things... They'll take your, your health, but they won't take it in a permanent way. That is, they don't take containers. They just take uh, take the contents of them, and they'll re reward you with coins. So if you have filled up the level with lots of um, with heart refreshers that you can't use... Ooh, ouch. Oh, boy. And they're, uh, they're fantastic to let you fill your coffers and then go back and replenish yourself with... Uh, with those hearts. Uh, this is not super useful for me, although it's somewhat more useful than... Oh, right. Stupid me. Could not have used that for that, but I will swing by there. Okay, the hermit. Um, did I already... Oh, but not so great. Yeah. Yeah, this game is definitely I'm pretty sure this is not gonna be a winning game. But let's do what we can to get as far as we can. And I didn't decide in this let's play whether I would be doing one one playthrough or a few. Oh, but if I got multiple of these, I'm probably going to die soon. To a new run. This time I'll play a different character. Um, let's go with uh, with Kane. Kane's probably one of my favorite characters because the Luckfoot is a lot of fun. Luckfoot makes you luckier. And 
And you even end up doing a little bit more damage with Kane than you do with other characters. Which is kind of useful, particularly at the start. Since it means that you're a little bit closer to your goal state of, of being well armed. Okay. Oh, let's see. What do you, do? you occasionally fire some extra tears out the back. Well, that is weird. Not super useful because. It's rare that you're gonna be maneuvering in between two groups of enemies, but it's not harmful. Sometimes it's useful. There are occasionally power-ups that are actively harmful. And uh, you want to learn what those are and avoid picking them up. And if you get them too early in the game, then you might as well just restart. Like on, on the first level, if you go into the item room and you get a bad item there, you might as well just restart the game. But if it's a neutral item, then uh, might as well play it through. Yeah, definitely not doing super well. This is not a great start either. Let myself get rather damaged. Early on, I'm not careful. So I'm just uh, one hit away from being toast. Oh, let's see. Be careful of these doors, too. Let's see. Let's one step on any of these floors, and I am a goner. Or being hit by these flies, or really anything at all. Uh, if I can knock out one of these dudes, though, I have a much better chance of surviving. Room to okay. Just need a little bit of room to. Okay, that, that helps a lot. Yeah. I misjudged which way he was gonna move. Tried to dodge in the wrong direction. Well, anyhow. New game is Kane. Let's see, what are you gonna do? Oh, homing shots. Well, that's kinda useful. Never understood the point of those, but they don't move. And it's kind of sit there wiggling. But whatever. They want to wiggle? Let them wiggle. Oh, if I get a bomb, that is one of those things. Now those red red thingy dudes back there. Oh, not a lot of red movement over here. Another bombable thing, but without bombs. These uh, piles of poo, they regenerate and they hurt you if you touch them. So you gotta be careful with them. The sad thing there is that there are bombs just in there. So if I can somehow manage to get some bombs, I'm uh, good to go, but I'm not sure I'm gonna manage that. No, the game doesn't want to give me any bombs yet. I'm probably not going to be able to get to those. If I just had one bomb, that would be good. But yeah, early on in the game, resource starvation is tricky. Uh, oh well. So up we go and around. I'm not going to bother using my key there because the chances are it is something which. Locked in here right now. Okay, clear it up. Uh, this acid all over the ground. And I don't want to step in it. Too far and bad. Dodge the hell out of everything. Uh, One mistake. He can fire things. If I get hit, I am toast. So I have a decent shot. More than that, I think. Let's see. Good. Oh, and this is one of those items that lets you fly. Sweet. So things are actually looking pretty good here. Because I can go pick up this bomb and use it to blow that up. Can 
want to kind of avoid those things of poo, but I can use these bombs. Like that. Yeah, flight is so useful. You can go and pick up that. So yeah, things are looking good now. I mean, yeah, this early in the game, already having flight, that's a definite advantage. Plus homing shots, they're not necessarily the best weapons, uh, weapons boost, because they don't make your shots more deadly, but they do. It's nice to, to have the, uh, have less of a disadvantage to actually hit stuff. Okay, so. And I'm just, oh, okay. there are things that'll that'll make your weapon pass through solid objects. I do not have any of those at the moment. Two. Here. There's another one of those bombs that can you do. I have a bomb? Yes, I do. Looking good. And that pot had some spiders inside it. Looking good. Yeah, I have that curse of uh, mystery or whatever it's called. Okay, just need to get the timing right. There we go. Oh, but there's another one of those things. Can I get this? Fudge didn't quite do that right. I do have a key, so I can slip in spirit. Ooh, interesting charge shots. How do those work with the homing thing? Oh, right, it's a charge shot, but not a laser. Because there's another one of these things that gives you a charge giant laser that will go through walls. If I had that, I would be completely set, and things would be awesome sauce. But things are not quite that good. Instead, this just gives me the option of charging my shots, or I can do this, or I can... Yeah, this is just, it gives me a little bit more operational flexibility, which is nice. So, let's go here, charge on up, go to the next room. And the downside of this is that means that I have to pay more, a lot more attention to what I'm doing, because previously, I, I could just hold down the fire button that would fire at, at uh, Isaac's maximum rate, or Kane's maximum rate in this case. But now I, uh, if I, if I don't want to be charging stuff, then I need to, uh, yeah, let's see, it's always fun to have one of these embedded in the wall things, because when you blow up a, a rock, you have a certain chance of uh, there being good stuff in the rock. And uh, it's not it's not certain or anything. It's, but it, it goes by by how many rocks you blow up. Now this this boss will charge you. As I mentioned before, you want to not be around when he does. So figure out when he's going to shoot at you or charge. You. Oh yeah, the one on the left I definitely don't want. I really don't like that item. The one on the right, I don't remember what it is, but I'll just leave it alone. Because I don't have a lot of health, and unless something is absolutely fantastic, I'm not going to spend any hearts on it right now. I really need more hearts before I really should be thinking about doing any bargains. Okay. 
but with this item, I, I mainly, uh, I mainly will just charge up the first shot with the next room. Otherwise, just keep, uh, just keep firing uh, the, the regular shots. Um, just because I think the charge time means that, uh, the charge time combi uh, combined with the risk of missing means it just doesn't really make sense to, to usually keep charging the room unless you know for certain that you can't. Uh, that you're not going to be able to hit uh, for a time, and then you might charge. But, but otherwise, just... Well, I mean, in that case, that was a little bit different because you know you're going to hit because they're right up against the wall and they can't move away from it, but otherwise... Uh, worm things, except these aren't the kind that can rush at you, or the kind that can fire at you. Okay, let's move over here, grab a coin, charge up. Just want these dudes charge up. What do you gotta do? There you go. You can't hurt these guys except when they lift their head up. Oop! There's one of the control bombs. You just basically wanna step back when you see one of those. Okay. Let's pop up here, see what we see. Okay. Pop over here. Two fly, don't bother me. Touch. Oh, and there I blew a door open, so I could escape now if I want to, but these guys are not particularly dangerous, particularly when you can fly. If I couldn't fly, then I would have a somewhat tougher time dodging them. my horse and thus lose me my flying ability so I'm gonna skip it. Because it's not terribly useful to begin with. Let's see what we here. Coins, bombs, yada yada. Whatever. Not that interesting. Okay. And two charged shots kill these things. When they get killed, they shoot off. So it's good to them when they do that. And I have enough coins where I could buy some. Let's see, what do you have? I don't quite remember what all these things are, but I think the thing on the left might be useful. I don't matter. Maybe. I don't know what it does, but. Okay. Take a risk just because I wasn't sure I could kill it before I reached it, but I now I want to get away from this guy. Let's see. Now that is a reference to Zelda, that that's how that works. That there were foes called, I think, Dodongo in Zelda, where there were giant uh, uh, dinosaur things, and they would come and run at you, and if you drop a bomb at them, they would swallow it, and then they would. Take damage. In fact, I think that was the only way they could damage the bomb. Whereas in this game, you can damage uh, damage to do that way. They uh, decide to let you. They decide to have them swallow. Uh, all these shot speed things, they're just good for making me hurt my hands with this charged shot item. Okay. Ordinarily, again, without this charge shot item, I would just be holding down the fire button and it would be firing at the maximum rate it could, but if you're holding down the fire button causes it to charge the shot, so I just have to keep tapping. That my thumb is just going to get cramps the, th the more charged item things I get. Keep moving. Okay. 
like getting, I'm hoping I, I can get more firepower. Causes enemies near you if you hit them with it to get confused. And throw pack other enemies. Kind of nice. Not the most useful thing in the world though, but it's kind of nice. Uh, keep moving. Moving on down. Definitely not getting a lot of health in this in this game, which is probably the biggest land is seem to be starting out pretty promisingly. Now, if I just move on to the pit here, then I'm safe. If they can't move on to the pit, there's nothing they can do to me while I'm over here. And I can just keep on firing at them from the safe down. And... Interesting here. Let's head over here. They're terrible if you're a slow character or if you have a weapon that's uh, particularly slow. Like if you only have a charged weapon, then those spider things are really annoying. Because you're probably not going to be able to easily get them up by the time they reach you. But, provided that your rate of fire is good or you're fast enough, and you have enough maneuvering room, you're probably good to go. It looks like I can't perch here, and he's not going to be able to do anything to me. Okay, and that golden poo thing is kind of nice, because when I destroy it, it will drop a lot of coins for me. It's useful if there is anything I want to buy at the store, or if I get to one of the gambling rooms. Gambling rooms are a lot of fun, because... Given how some of the gambling rooms work, they're a decent way to increase your health or get free items or both. Of course, you're not guaranteed to find them. There's very little that you're guaranteed to see in the game. Okay, this. Ah, more damage and more health. Well, I'm getting quite as much of this as I would like to, but it's a start at least. Sometimes your post will fill out their phone. Over here. Oh, these guys can fire buttons, or some of them explode nastily when they die, so you can't make sure you're entirely safe. And down with oh, these guys. Well, they're not too bad. But these guys, if you're badly. if you're doing really bad damage, then these guys can be can they can generate flies at a pretty prodigious rate, but if you can't kill flies at a prodigious rate, you are really going to have a tough, tough time to, 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 you need to somehow keep, keep yourself getting clear shots at them through their cloud of flies. And if your mobility is bad, you also have to dodge all the flies that you're generating. Which is not fun. Oh yeah, let's do the devil, which I think is need more damage. Go. This gives me still more damage. Well, that's now. Is there anything I missed up here? Because usually I haven't found the secret room yet. Maybe it's over here. The rules for the secret room are that it typically is bordered by three rooms, and it can't be bordered by a pit on any of the rooms. And you have to use bomb to get there. Okay, off we go. These guys, if those mask things are invulnerable, you have to destroy the heart. Okay, now with this, we're actually going to let these things destroy the rock. 
the hunts of our pet goodies in them. Okay. I'm going to destroy some more rocks. All the, I mean, we're not going to wait for them to, to destroy all the rocks because that takes a while, but letting them destroy a lot of the room is a pretty good chance of being okay. With the, All the damage boosts I've gotten, I'm doing pretty well. In fact, firepower wise, pain in the butt, but I have to put that up because, again, I am. Um, oh, well. Doing okay with everything except for the amount of health that I have, which is pretty poor. What? Oh, did I not get close enough in here? I don't think I did. Uh, there's a troll bomb. Some coins. No need to actually use keys to get past that because I can fly over all that stuff. Now, I think I mentioned that occasionally monsters will damage other monsters, but it's definitely true in this case. These spiky things will hurt the monsters, but... Okay, what is that? That is a pill. Oh! This... Yeah, okay. Let's see what this will do. Oh, that just drops regular hearts. <laughs> And, and that laughter, you wouldn't notice if you ever turn the sound off, so don't turn the sound off in this game. It means that there will be hands dropping down from the ceiling to grab you and move you back to the beginning of the game. What this? I don't quite remember what that does. Maybe it's that whenever you take damage or something. No, no, it's whenever you damage a crow, uh, the flies will come out. Yeah, that will increase my range. Well, that is useful. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually going to do some damage. I just don't have a lot of health. Which is okay. I don't remember quite what this thing does. Oh, no, that is not what I want. That would replace my flight. And you really never want to replace your flight. So I just waste a lot of coins on. Something that I thought was passive, but was actually activated. Oh. Yeah, it pays to, to learn the items in this game, and I haven't quite learned all of them yet. Oh, there is a relic, I think they're called. Okay, there we go. What are you going to do? Oh, you give me more flies. Well, that's fine. I'm not completely safe. Right here. Let's keep exploring the level. Quite ready to do the boss yet, particularly given. I really need to find more goodies, maybe down here, because it's surrounded by three. Yeah, good. Oh, just bombs. Oh, it was worth a shot. Okay. Well, I should waste the key. Well, I have plenty of keys at this point. Spider. Okay. Oh, goodbye, spider hives. Okay. Yeah, but this is basically what you can expect from the binding of Isaac. Every game will be a different game, different items, but otherwise it's a generally Zelda-ish game, roughly speaking. Which just might be what you're looking for. A challenge room. Let's see what. Okay, more damage. Oh. This is another type of foe where you can only damage them from one direction. And that makes them unpleasant to deal with. I didn't know that those ever showed up in the game. I thought that they were... Well, I guess now I know. We'll keep on learning things about the game as we go through. I haven't unlocked everything, although as you probably saw by the, uh, by the bank, uh, if you've been playing the game for a while, you will notice that I have unlocked a lot of things and 
or that I'm playing for a while too because I have used the bank thing you do. Oh, damn it. I need to be paying more attention. But I, I've uh, fed the um, the bank thing in the item room several times. Uh, nothing in here that I can buy. I don't have enough money, and up we go to the box. Increase my damage. Oh, my back. But, so much. Okay, fine. Okay. Two levels to go, I think. Let's see how we're going to do this. How is this going to play out? Very glad to have that flexibility of flight here. Because this kind of level with these kinds of foes is very unpleasant for not flight. Okay. Once again, you can't hit them except you can't hit them from the front. And this isn't fun when you are hemmed in. Oh, nice. If I can't get enough permanent health, then getting enough uh, enough of those uh, of that temporary health is good enough. Okay. Yeah, the, the, now that particular color of red thing is dangerous because it will fire at you. It's a fairly low rate. Now, I'm down here, I can actually kill these things. So I'm actually probably doing okay at this point in the game. I do not like to do that. these things are. They'll, they only show up for a second, and so they do a good amount of damage. Although, again, it's great that I have the mobility to deal with. Mobility is a big part of the game. Bombs are key, not so useful. Most of diarrhea can actually be useful. Okay, now the, those skull floaty things, they are invincible, but they disappear when you defeat all the other foes in the room. So you just, they're basically things to dodge. Which is interesting. Okay, I can be nice and safe over here. Because those guys will get the top of their pit. They're annoying how fast they are, but I can just use them in my little safe place. Okay, the boss is over there. Let's visit the rest of the level. And then we will go meet the foe again because I'm flying. I don't need to worry too much about the... Uh... Okay, let's charge our weapon because nothing we can do here. Oh, missed. Okay, where are you? Where you are? Whoop. Um, yeah, I think I want this. Yeah, that's... I don't remember what this is. Oh, it leaves a trail of damaging stuff. Well, that's okay. Doesn't really help me a lot because well, I guess it's useful here. Foes that walk, they'll take damage stepping on it. Not the most useful thing in the world, but it doesn't hurt. I would certainly take more health over this any day, but you can't always choose what you're going to get. Certainly could be another completely useless thing. Okay, let's pop over here. Yeah, I have a need for more, more coins. Actually, I might, might stop by and use that. Okay. Need to relax. Let's see, what are you going to do? You're going to give me some flies. Some good flies. Okay. I the more firepower you have, it, it, it basically means that you can deal with stuff by running up and killing it before it has the chance to get its tactical game on. And, uh, and it means that you might not have to deal with other tactical situations that you otherwise would have to deal with, which saves you a whole lot of trouble. So yeah, you, you really want to have a good amount of firepower by a certain point in the game. If you don't, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, so I have a half a heart here, 
half a heart here. Um, full heart there. So I have two hearts that I can. Uh, where was it? Two hearts. Two and a half hearts. Two and a half hearts. I can refill myself back up to full. And I have considerably more coins for my effort. That is the nice thing about gambling rooms is that they have uh, have a good amount of that built in. Now, what is this? Secrets. That means that now I can tell where all the secret rooms are. And range. More range is nice. I uh, probably don't quite need. Oh, yeah. So there's a secret down here. Let's see what it is. Yeah, you know, it's one of these things. Well, those are sometimes useful. Not always. But I might have missed the other secret room. Yeah, I think I did. Well, let's pop up and bomb our way into it. And see what we can get. Oh. No, it's these guys. Let's see. Do you have enough bombs? Okay. Now the thing that I'm really missing here is some kind of protection from bullet hell. Which is okay but it's not quite ideal. And that means that if I'm ever facing a foe that's going to fire a lot of bullets at me, I'm probably going to take a good amount of damage. And was there something up here I needed? Uh, not really. Okay, I can't remember what was... Um, the Lovers was... Oh, right, The Lovers was... Um, I think that was two hearts. So if I can pop over here. Oh, no. What was up here? That was another half. Oh wait, another half heart would be useful. Oh, fudge it. Let's just move on. There's a lot of optimization that you can do that is pretty fiddly. The knife is not really all that helpful at this point, could have a better weapon, so I'm just going to keep moving downwards. Okay, two more levels to go. Let's see how we do. Challenge room. In the game, you just have to keep track of a lot of foes. It's great for time, there's a lot of bullet time. Now, this guy is interesting because he keeps on dropping explosive dudes, explosive flies, but if you can blow those up quick enough, then you can take damage from the deck. One more foe here. That guy is off-fledged. the way that he was going to move, and move right to the way he was going to move. Game push turn two. Ah, hard one, that's. Not a bad 
thing to be rewarded with. And I'll use that card at this point. I'll use both of these, but flip up these with max safety. Okay. Oh, I don't think I've seen this one yet. Pretty fly. Okay. A fly will block a projectile. Be nice to have two more of these guys because that's the maximum that you can have. But one fly is better than no flies. Okay, and are these weird little wiggly dudes, which I have no idea if they ever do anything dangerous. They're not particularly threatening. Oh, these do not have to be Very well. They will blow you the fuck up. And, uh... go. Because my weapons are homing and his are not. Normally that guy would be like the perfect mirror of, of, of you, but if he doesn't get, get all, all of the weird uh, weapon uh, changes that we have, so if your weapons have special traits, then you have these damage. Actually, they're just because he's stupid, you, you get a lot of damage. But... You have to be smart enough to know how to use it. Okay, let's move on up. And across. And across. And down. Let's see what other advantage I can get. Don't need that. Oh, I might need it later. Yeah, I can be nice and safe over in. Yeah, it's good to have a fair amount of firepower. Definitely where the secret room is. Ooh, let's move into there. Okay. Not fifty percent off on any stores, but I don't think there are, I don't think stores still exist at this point in the game, but if they do, then I'm gonna be doing that. Okay. Watch out for them converts. Oh, that was a lucky shot. Another fewer foe. Or fewer foe. Okay. There's still foes left. I guess there must be one because the doors are shut. Oh, there you are. You're being sneaky. Where are you? Oh, dude. But fortunately, you can still hit, uh, hit them just after they stick their head down. Not making as much of the, of the use of the dropping acidy tear stuff behind me as I could be, but it's hard to keep track of too many things at once. And what is up here? More pills. Luck. Well, luck is nice. That is not so useful. There's another fly. Pheromones is not important. Range is always nice. I guess I'll just save this because I can. The Are You a Wizard thing makes you pile fire diagonally for a while, which is not something I actually like. But it can be useful, but it just attempts to wear out at unpredictable times. And I would just rather not have a weapon where I can't rely on it to, do, to, to work in the way that I expect. So it wore out. Good. Over we move. 
down, over, and over. Here we go. Seem to be doing a bad job at figuring out where these things are going to drop. <laughs> Particularly because I'm shy on hearts, I do not really need to sacrifice what is left. Okay, last level I think, although the game does have a lot of extra levels. And uh, it's not always super fixable when the game is going to be over for that reason, because you don't always end up going into the extra levels. And there are certain things that you can do that make it more likely that you will, but... Trying new web, uh, new uh, game recording software here. I'm hoping that the quality on this is going to be decent. Not entirely certain. Oh, there you actually saw fly absorb a shot, which is pretty nice. Oh, there's one of those annoying super bomb things. Here's up. That's nice. Uh, range down. Well, not so nice. Range up. Good. Deer up. And what is it? Good. And some more of these. Oh, that's always nice. Now you have a certain ability, if you do get into some of the extra levels near the end of the game, you have a certain ability to choose which path you're going to take. And there you might want to choose which path based on what, what kind of build you, you ended up with. Like, are you better at dealing with bullet hell, or are you better at dealing with uh, uh, thing? Or are you better at dealing with uh, raw damage? Uh, more fair bones. Well, whatever. Paramount are okay. <laughs> uh, we are with that. But yeah, I figured this is probably well, these guys have one of those nasty super laser things. Fun, but I'm not really staying still for long. There we go. Right. I kept moving. He didn't get to hit me. Ha -ha. Up we go. And around. Okay. Now those are useful. But only if you have a little bit more funds than I do at this point in the game. just to hide behind. We'll just bounce off of it and I can float over it when I'm ready to go. Perfect. It's like the definition of cover. Okay, so let's pop up here. Now we are sitting pretty. Yes, things are looking good. I don't remember if we've been in this secret room before. Let's we'll find out. Not yet. And there is a guy who's actually asking for keys. Ordinarily, I don't have enough keys to satisfy people like this. But in this case, I do. And these, that dude is kind of useful. If he hits a foe, he will blow up, and they will usually blow up. 
and then he will slowly, he'll come back after a while, which is kind of useful. And somewhere back here, there was a sacrifice coins for stuff, dude, which I think, yeah, here. Probably have enough funds to get something out of this guy. I'm not sure. Typically, they take a certain amount of coins, and then they give you something useful, and then they disappear. But I haven't given them quite enough coins. Maybe I don't have enough coins to do that. Oh, well. Well, it was worth a shot. Let's see if I get any coins from that. No. Well, here we go. So I think the game is sending me down into a further level, and there we go. somehow without taking damage. Which is a good thing because at this point in the game, you typically will take a lot more damage from any hit than you do in early levels. So you have to be super, super careful. But I'm doing okay so far. what I like to see. Oh, it's not going perfectly though. Okay. Oh, there we go. And up we go. Well, let's see what we can get out of that. And oh, what are you? What are you? you are passage. I think this tries to take you downwards one level. Maybe. Which doesn't do anything when you're already at the bottom level of the game, which is where I am right now. So. Yeah. Let's double check here though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. And no point to spend on that. Healthy for being dead. I need to try dead things to be at the antithesis of being healthy, but that's not how it works in video games. Oh, nice. Some coins. Oh, nice. Very good coins. Okay. Let's see what else we can find over here. Not like standing right next 
my explodey friend with his explosion too. He helped to blow them up, which is most excellent of him. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's those guys. Good. Those guys apparently go to sleep after you. Guys with the spider lasers right at you where it's not fun though. Pheromones. Bombs are key. Okay. More pheromones. Okay, well. Yeah, let's see what's up here. It's entirely possible that if I continue to wander around here, I'm dooming myself. But the point of the game isn't to win, I don't think. So I don't really mind too much if it's a little bit more adventuring than I can win. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we might have some of these dudes. Two of these guys. Disappointing. Oh well. Moving right along. Let's go and visit the boss. Oh, well. Maybe visit this thing first. What do you have for me? Final boss. At least. The binding, uh, binding of Isaac, and I think uh, I'll uh, I will see you later in another Let's Play.